Welcome back. We're resuming uh, in video three of four. And we're looking at this time the elements that go into a programming language. Programming languages are different, but they have certain things in common. They have keywords or reserved words, and these are the words or symbols that really define the language. How you say things is part of the keywords that you're using. Um, programs also permit the programmer to create its own vocabulary, such as the names of variables are up to the programmer. The programming language tells you what the operators are. An operator is merely a symbol that represents some action. Plus, for example, means add. Star instead of an X means multiply. The language elements also include punctuations. And these symbols help organize the program, such as commas. And typically, commas mean about what they mean in English. If I say I went to the store and bought a hat, comma, a coat, comma, and some sho shoes, the comma is merely separating parts of a sentence for you. Uh, in C++, a semicolon plays a special role in that its job is to terminate a statement. Uh, and parentheses are also uh, used as punctuation. And finally, each language has its own grammar. If you remember from English, grammar means how you organize what you want to say. For example, um, in some languages, a verb comes before the noun. Other, excuse me, in some languages, an adjective comes before the noun. In others, the adjective may go after the noun. So, uh, syntax tells you how to organize elements of a statement. Here's a sample program. And let, I need your participation now. Let's begin to identify things. What are the things that we can identify? Earlier we said that this line means what? Preprocessor directive, which says include a library called IOStream into the compilation process. Why is that necessary? Well, this particular library contains this, which really is another way of saying the screen. It contains this, which is another way that says output something to the screen. Right? Uh, where are some keywords? Well, I suspect this is a keyword. This is a keyword. Uh, this technically is not a keyword. Okay, You can put anything there you want. I mean, it could be other things. You can make up your own um, namespaces here. Int is a keyword, main is a keyword. What else do we see? Return is a keyword. All right? What else do we say we could find? We say we have programmer defined identifiers. Where are they? Uh, these guys here are variables. What kind of variables? These are variables that hold whole numbers. Okay? Um, and what's sum? Again, it's another variable that the, that the programmer can create. What else? We have operators. Where are the operators? Well, this is an operator that says, put the following thing, which is this, into the output. All right? So when we run this, what will show up on the screen? The word, the sum is, no quotes, followed by a second thing, which is an actual number for the sum. Another operator is this equal sign. This looks like a formula in algebra. Uh, where you're, where you're uh, calculating the value of a single variable. And it's written pretty much the same way you do in algebra, except what? We have a semicolon at the end because in C++, we must complete things by putting a semicolon. Notice that we're doing a calculation followed by doing some output. And you must stop one thing before you start the next thing. All right? And the punctuation, where's the punctuation? Notice that we have parentheses here. We have open brace. If something opens, you gotta close it. You have a closed brace. That's punctuation. Uh, semicolon is punctuation. 
And finally, we have the rules of grammar. And the rules of grammar simply says, uh, if I do this, if I want to give the value 12 to a variable called num, I have to say it this way. I cannot say it 12 equals num, 2. That you cannot do. Forget it, forget it, forget it, okay? Can't do that. So I'm just going to mark that in some color so you don't dare try that. Can't do that. All right. Now, this is a second program. It's no different. All right. So uh, it's possible for you to look up all the reserved words in um, C++. Let me tell you why. You can never, when you create a variable called num1, you can never create a variable called um, main. Why is that? Because main has its own use. You can never use main in any other way. So sometimes you need to be aware of what those um, keywords are so that you do not attempt to create anything with the same name. Key thing to note is all the keywords in C++ are lowercase. Just like you may have noticed that in Unix, all the Unix commands are lowercase. You might remember that repository commands, which I tried to tell you were slightly different from Unix commands, always begin with two capital letters to remind you it is not a basic Unix command. All right. And we can create our, an identifier is a, is a term that means the name that you give to something. If I create a variable, I can give it a name. The rules for forming the name have to comply with the rules for an identifier. And I can go ahead and tell you. An identifier begins with either a letter or an underscore. It can contain letters and underscores and digits. But it must begin, begin either with a letter or an alphabet or an underscore. Um, the variable one num is not allowed. That's a no-no. That's a total no-no. Why? Because the, you must begin with the um, letter. Now, what's a variable? A variable simply is a name for a memory cell where a value can be stored. And the rules are pretty simple. Before you can store a value into that memory cell, you must, ask, you must establish that memory cell. And we do that by declaring that variable. So when you see a statement that begins with something like an int or a double, followed by an identifier, starts with a letter, has letters and digits and underscores, then we are creating a variable. After the variable is created, like in algebra, you can then assign it a value uh, and manipulate it. An operator, there are many types of operators. There's a arithmetic operator, there's an assignment operator, there's an input operator, output operator, and we've seen the use of all those things. Okay. Right? And we've seen examples of punctuation. Now, your, pro your source program can have many lines in it. So if we go in here and look, we have many lines. The comp I can actually take the line and split the line this way. And it's still the same statement. Why is that? The statement begins here and it ends where? At the semicolon. So the compiler doesn't really care how many lines you take to write a statement as long as you do what? Terminate the statement before you start another. All right. Okay. Um, when we say source file, what do I mean by that? Everybody should say it should be a file that's a CPP file. That's good. Okay, we're going to end here. Uh, and finally, we're going to talk about in the next video the process of developing a program.